On August 30, 1919, a hero was born, Maurice Ralph Hilleman. That hero did not only change the lives of most Americans, but changed the lives of people worldwide. He changed science, culture, and history. Many people even say he was the greatest scientist of the 1900s. Maurice was the son of Anna and Gustav Hillman. He was the eighth child and the only one born with a twin sister. That didn't last long though when his twin sister died right after birth. Two days later, his mother died. It was her wish to have Maurice raised by his aunt and uncle who lived only a couple miles away from their house. It was a strange childhood that Maurice had in Miles City, Montana. Waking up at his aunt and uncle's, working on the farm with his siblings, then going back to his aunt and uncle's house to sleep. That routine was almost daily. When Maurice was still a child, he was caught reading The Origin of Species in church. He was extremely advanced for his age. One of his favorite authors was Sinclair Lewis. Maurice was a hard worker. He studied for school knowing that he wanted to do something important in his life. Maurice was inspired by Paul de Kroof, an American microbiologist. But he did not only work super hard at school, he had a lot of work to do at the farm as well. One of his jobs was to take care of the chickens. Spending time with the chickens helped him learn a lot about germs and bacteria. We did not learn about him in medical school. And even though we talk about vaccines all the time in pediatrics, no one has ever, that I recall, mentioned his name. He graduated from Custer County High School in 1937, being the highest ranked student in all of his classes. He earned a scholarship to Montana State University he graduated in 1941, in which he soon went to the University of Chicago to further his education in microbiology. He also seems to have had a pretty good work ethic. You know, it seems like he was a pretty hardworking guy. In the year of 1943, Maurice married Thelma. They made the decision to adopt a child that they would name Gerald Lynn Hillman. Everything was going great for a while. Maurice majored in chemistry and microbiology, and in 1944, he earned his PhD. That same year, Maurice started his work at ER Squibb & Sons, where he developed his first vaccine against Japanese encephalitis. This vaccine was used to protect soldiers during World War II. In 1949, he became a chief at Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. It seems like he had a lot of things that were just the circumstances around him. You know, he was born at a time when, you know, the world was ready for these vaccines and the technology was there. If he'd been born a hundred years earlier, even with all those smarts and talent and hard work, he wouldn't have been able to do this. In 1957, Maurice predicted that an influenza virus was going to outbreak in Hong Kong. He created a vaccine before this virus could spread to the U.S. Hillman became the first person to predict a pandemic. With this move, he saved millions of lives. Therefore, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal from the U.S. military. Just a little after, Maurice started working for Merck & Co. This was where he spent the rest of his career. We're very lucky in our country that we do not see these devastating illnesses that are um, eliminated by vaccines. Chickenpox, Hepatitis A, Hepatitis B, Pneumonia caucus, Meningococcus, Measles, mumps, and rubella are just a few of the vaccines Hillman created. He was the first to combine viral vaccines. The MMR vaccine combines measles, mumps, and rubella, hence the name. Since Maurice created so many vaccines, we are curious about which vaccine was the most important. So, probably it would be between measles and, and Haemophilus influenzae for me, um, but I don't know. There's also hepatitis. That's a terrible chronic disease. Um, so I'm not really sure. I think that the MMR vaccine for my patients and my specialty is the most important um, because those diseases, if pregnant women would get them while they were pregnant, would often lead to serious birth defects or even death of their baby. I'd have to look at how many patients had severe effects from measles. We know some can, but most survive it and are okay. So how does that stack up against the other, my other favorite one was the Haemophilus influenzae B1, which is um, a bacteria that causes meningitis in children. And um, 
for that one, it's not nearly as infectious, you know, jumping from person to person in the matter of an hour. But when you get it, it's devastating. Very high rates of death. Uh, it causes hearing impairment. It causes, um, you know, brain damage. Maurice also created eight out of the 14 vaccines that most children in America get today. As Paul Offit put it, he had a green thumb for making vaccines. A newborn baby being being born deaf has decreased by something like 99% since that vaccine was developed. Measles is the most highly infectious virus that we know of on the planet. And so um, it really can wreak havoc. You know, if there's a measles case, it's just everywhere before you even know about it, which is a nightmare. I have never seen a case of measles. I have never seen a case of the mumps. I've never seen a case of rubella. Um, so he has effectively, his work eliminated um, a huge amount of diseases that before we had a vaccine were fatal. Thelma got cancer and died on November 7th, 1962. The following year, Hilleman married Lorraine Whitmer. In 1965, they had a daughter named Kirsten Hilleman. They, they comment that he was a family man too, and so I'm imagining that his family kind of provided a lot of support so that he had the ability to work so hard. They probably took care of everything else so that he could do that work. Um, he probably had good colleagues and a lot of funding to have a team around him. Um, so that they could take the science that was known and really quickly, you know, run experiments to get things um, uh, to market. The family rarely went on vacations, but once a year, they would spend about five days in Cape Cod and they would have a blast. They went out to dinner, went fishing and had a good time. When they were at dinner, anywhere, whether it's at home or at a fancy restaurant, Maurice would ask for ketchup. He'd put ketchup on anything and everything. He loved simple foods such as chicken pot pie and dumplings. His favorite dessert was apple pie a la mode. One night, Geraldine said, Daddy, my throat's sore. So Maurice explained to her that she would go back to bed and he would head off to his lab to get a throat swabber. When Maurice came back, he got a sample of her throat and concluded that she had mumps. Four years later, the vaccine was finished. It took until 1971 to start vaccinating people with it. Maurice was kind and humble. He did not mind if someone else was being recognized more than he was. Hillman was just glad to help children. There was a great joy in being useful, he later said. Earning many awards in his years of excellence, including the Alaska Bloomberg Public Service Award in 1983, the National Medal of Science for Biological Sciences in 1988, and the Prince Mahadol Award in 2002. Maurice Hillman worked for 25 years at Merck when he retired in 1984. Merck states that Maurice Hillman is responsible for much of the work against vaccine-preventable diseases. Sadly though, Maurice Hillman died on April 11, 2005. The Golden Age of Vaccinology is a term used by epidemiologists to describe the first couple decades after World War II. The reason it is called this is thanks to Maurice Hillman. He saves an estimated 8 million lives a year. I don't know where our world would be without the help of Maurice Hillman. He is a great example of a brave, courageous, determined, unsung hero. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you, Maurice Hilleman. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you, Maurice, for all of your groundbreaking and pioneering work in vaccinology and virology. We, as a country and as a world, owe you a great debt of gratitude. <laughs>